Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here with this third part of this chapter that is pollination process in plants. Today I will discuss about the various agencies which are required for cross pollination because uh, sexual reproduction in animals is brought about by the active participation of male and female individuals because uh, the male and female can walk, crawl, swim or fly to reach their respective counterparts but plants are distinct in this regard. The male flowers or male organs have no internal device to reach to the female organ in another flower. They are dependent for this on some external agencies which mostly transfer pollen grains from the male parent to the stigma of the female parent. So that's why the plant requires certain agencies to transfer their pollen grains to the stigmatic surface of the flower. So we will discuss about these agencies in detail one by one in detail. So agencies for cross pollination these are broadly divided into two parts one is abiotic agencies which are the non-living things which participate in transfer of pollen grains uh, the first one is animophily anima means wind so this is the transfer of pollen grains with the help of wind for example in case of palms and most of the grasses the next is by the agency of water that is hydrophily the transfer of pollen grains by the agency of water is known as hydrophily as in case of Elisneria. Then comes biotic agencies. Biotic agencies include living organisms, mostly animals. So firstly, pollination with the help of insects, which is the most important part. So most of the plants are pollinated by the insects. For example, we have Aristolochia, Salvia. Then we have Ornithophily. Ornithophily means pollination by birds. For example, in case of Bombex, Bohemia, then uh, this uh, in Bohemia pollination is done by the smallest bird that is hummingbird. The next uh, we have Chiropterophily that is pollination by bats. For example, in case of sausage tree that is known as Cagula pinnata, then Malacophily that is pollination by snails, slugs. Then Myrmecophily that is pollination by ants. So these are the agencies which are involved in pollination process. We will discuss these in detail one by one. So firstly, we will discuss about wind pollination that is anemophily. Air in motion is known as wind. So here, wind helps in transfer of pollen grains from the anthers to the stigmatic surface of flower. And this is known as anemophily. This is the uh, male cone of Pinus and these uh, dust particles are the pollen grains. Pollen grains are carried by wind from stamens to the pistil with the agency of wind is known as anemophily and it occurs mostly in grasses, sedges, many angiosperms with the unisexual flowers like we have oaks, willows, poplars, elms, elders and walnut and conifers. So in plants, mein, jo pollination hoti hai, that is carried out by the agency of air. And world's most important crop plants like we have wheat, rice, corn, rye, barley and oats. These all plants are wind pollinated. And this is the adaptation shown by these plants where male and female uh, parts are separated. And this is adaptation to, to stop the inbreeding or to prevent the inbreeding so that there can be exchange of characters between two different plants and it occurs with the help of air. Next comes characteristics of wind pollinated plants. So these plants show some unique characteristic features. Uh, they produce small inconspicuous uh, dull colored flowers because uh, they have no need to attract the pollinators for this pollination process. So they produce small, inconspicuous, green and not showy flowers. In addition to this, they don't produce, these flowers don't produce nectar and scent. So they do not produce scent and nectar to attract the pollinators. So flowers are mostly appear when plants do not have developed leaves after autumn. So autumn ke baad, jab uh, plants when leaves appear, hone shuru hote hai, uh, usse pehle hi ye plant produce karte hai, their floral parts so that uh, these flowers are mostly exposed to wind. 
जो लीव्स हैं वो हिंडर ना कर पाए विंड को सो दैट्स वाई दे प्रोड्यूस फ्लावर बिफोर द अपियरेंस और डेवलपमेंट ऑफ लीव्स आफ्टर ऑटम इन एडिशन टू दिस दीज प्लान प्रोजेस इज वेल एक्सपोज स्टेमन्स सो दे बी आर द फ्लावर्स हेयर द स्टेमन्स आर वेल एक्सपोज Um, and mostly with versatile or flexible anther or filament so that they can uh, expose the pollen grains into the wind currents they produces huge amount of uh, pollen grains and they are smaller in size so they produces large amount of uh, pollen grains to ensure the process of cross pollination then the pollen grains are lightweight dry smooth walled and non sticky so that they can be transported by air current so these are some features of uh, pollen grains uh, which are pollinated by wind so wind pollinated plants show this sort of pollen grains so this is the uh, image which shows all the characteristic features which are possessed by the plants uh, which are pollinated by wind so wind pollinated flowers are different in structure because they do not have to attract any insect towards them but do need to expose to the wind so that's why they produce pollen grains which are of very small size and light in weight they occur in very large amount means they produce a huge amount of pollen grains then anthers are exposed to wind so that the pollen grains can easily be blown away by air then in these flowers petals are small and green as there is no need to attract the insects because they uh, have, they are uh, no requirement of pollinators because they are fully dependent upon the wind for the transfer of pollen grains in addition to this they don't bear any scent or nectar producing glands and the female portion the stigma are feathery so that they can catch the pollen grains which are carried out by wind so these are some characteristic features of flowers of wind pollinated plant so here the stigmas of these plants are usually large and feathery so that they can trap the pollen grains or they can catch catch the pollen grains which are blown away by the air next comes water pollination that is uh, hydrophily so it is the transfer of pollen grains from the male flower to the female flower by the agency of water is known as hydrophily or water pollination it is very uncommon in plants aquatic plant because most of the aquatic plants are insect pollinated because they produce uh, brightly colored flowers which are large in size and uh, this uh, water pollination is reported to occur uh, in 31 genera and 11 families so bahut hi kam members hain aquatic plants ke jinme jo pollination hoti hai that is through the agency of water which is a abiotic agency here the flowers tend to be small and inconspicuous so this is again characteristic feature of uh, water pollinated flowers then they produces lots of pollen grains similar to that of uh, anemophilus flowers in water so they produces lots of pollen grains in water they have large and feathery stigma so that they can catch the pollen grains in water currents here the water assisted pollination may be accomplished either under the water surface which is known as hypohydrophily or on the surface of water which is known as epihydrophily so these uh, this is the, uh, there are two types of hydrophily uh, one is hypohydrophily here the pollination occur under the surface of water or on the surface of water which is epihydrophily firstly hypohydrophily hypo means lower so it involves plants which are pollinated inside the water surface so hypohydrophily hoti hai aise plants mein which are mostly submerged plant like we have examples ceratophyllum najaz and zoster this is the photograph of ceratophyllum then this is photograph of najaz and this is zoster so ye jo plants hain in mein hypohydrophily hoti hai aur ye jo plants hain they are submerged plants means they live under the surface of water here the pollen grains have one characteristic feature that is they have same or more specific gravity as that of the surrounding water jo surrounding water hai uske barabar hi iski specific gravity hoti hai that's why they do not sink or move upward to the surface of water isliye ye remain uh, they uh, float freely under the surface of water for in case of ceratophyllum the stamens of ceratophyllum floats upward when detached from the flower their anthers rupture during upward movement iske jo anthers hain wo jab up, uh, upward movement show karte hain to wo rupture hote hain they release the pollen grains during this process 
these pollens with specific or same gravity as that of the surrounding water these pollen grains have same specific gravity as that of surrounding water and they become freely distributed in the water surface and are trapped by sticky stigmas they comes in contact with the sticky stigmas and ensure the process of pollination and it occurs under the surface of water they usually have your sinking pollens in case of najas are caught by stigmas of extremely simple female flowers so najas ke case mein bhi yehi hota hai jo pollen grains hai they are heavier aur wo sink karte hain niche ki taraf and they comes in contact with the sticky stigmas of najas and ensure the process of pollination under the surface of water in case of zostera flowers are highly adapted to aquatic environment the male flowers releases long filamentous strands of pollens into the water and it comes in contact with the sticky stigmas and ensure the process of pollination these uh, pollens of hydro hypohydrophilus plants have some characteristic features firstly they are long and needle like so they looks more as that of the pollen tube so these are some characteristic feature of pollen grains of hypohydrophilus plants next comes epihydrophily epi means upon so this is the act of pollination which occurs on the surface of water so it occurs in some plants like uh, we have valisneria eloidea which is commonly known as pond weed canadian pond weed so it is more frequent as compared to the hypohydrophily so it occurs more as compared to the hypohydrophilus plants it is reported to occur in calitriche Eloidea valisneria so the most commonly seeded plant in case of epihydrophily is the valisneria here the male flowers gets detached from the male plant jo male flowers are detached ho jate hain they comes on the surface of water then in case of female plant the female flower has a long spiral stalk aur ye jo spiral stalk hai ye relax ho jate hain detach ho jate hain and it also comes to the surface of water here the ripe anther releases the pollen grains and becomes in contact with the female stigmatic surface of female flower and then show the process of pollination and after pollination uh, it this female plant retract this uh, stalk and comes under the surface of water and develops into the fruit the pollens float on the surface of water of uh, and reach the stigmatic surface of female flower by the water currents here in case of valisneria spinalis the male flower gets detached from the male plant and float on the surface of water and the female flowers reach the surface of water because they have their long spirally coiled stalk which gets stretched to the surface of water to ye jo female flowers hai inme long stalk hoti hai jo spiral hoti hai but during the process of pollination ye stretch hoti hai and it reaches the surface of water here both flowers comes in contact with each other and affects the process of pollination thereafter the stalk of female flower retracts and fertilizes the flower and the fertilized flower come to lie again inside the water where they develops into the fruit after pollination process or fertilization process jo female flower hai ye fir se retract back mean jo spiral hai coil hoti hai ye fir se spirally coil hota hai and uh, it lies again inside the water where they develops into the fruit in case of canadian pondweed that is eloidea canadian the male flowers breaks off and floats downstream until they come in contact with the female flower to ensure the process of pollination so this is all about the epihydrophily next comes the biotic agencies or zoophily here the pollination occurs with the help of uh, some animals So firstly we'll discuss about entomophily here the pollination is uh, brought about by the insects and this is the most commonly occurring type of pollination with the help of insect so pollen grains are transferred by various types of insects it is most common mode of pollination involving bees butterflies moths beetles wasps and flies and we use a particular term for uh, the particular insect pollination and they are highly specific towards the color fragrance scent and nectar of a plant uh, of a flower so flowers are brightly colored fragrant and often secrete nectar to the visiting pollinators as a reward 
सो डिफरेंट इंसेक्ट विजिटर्स हैव डिफरेंट प्रेफरेंसेस फॉर कलर फ्रेगरेंस एंड नेक्टर तो जो भी पॉइनेटर्स हैं और एक पर्टिकुलर इंसेक्ट का एक पर्टिकुलर प्लांट के फ्लावर के लिए कलर के लिए एक पर्टिकुलर प्रेफरेंस होता है एंड दे डू पॉइनेशन इन अ पर्टिकुलर प्लांट नेक्स्ट इंसेक्ट पॉइनेटर फ्लावर्स एग्जिबिट सम यूनिक करेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस दे आर लार्ज लार्ज ब्राइटली कलर टू अट्रैक्ट इंसेक्ट पॉइनेटर्स स्मॉल साइज फ्लावर आर यूजली क्लस्टर्ड इन टू अ लार्ज साइज ग्रुप तो जो स्मॉल साइज के फ्लावर्स हैं दे ग्रो इन क्लस्टर एंड गिवज एन पेरेंट्स ऑफ अ लार्ज फ्लावर लीव्स आर मॉडिफाइड इन टू रेड कलर ब्रैकेट्स एज इन केस ऑफ पॉइंट सीटा दैट इज यू फोर बी अपल चिराइमा वन ऑफ द सेपल्स इज लार्ज इन केस ऑफ मोसेंडा स्पीशीज एंड ब्रैकेट्स आर लार्ज एंड वेरियसली कलर्ड इन केस ऑफ वॉग एंड वेलिया स्पीशीज दैट इज कॉमन इन गार्डन क्लोरी इसमें जो ब्रैकेट्स होते हैं दे आर कलरफुल टू अट्रैक्ट द टू अट्रैक्ट द इंसेक्ट पॉइनेटर्स दैन स्पेथ ऑफ द इन्फ्लोरसेंस इन केस ऑफ एंथोरियम मोसा दैट इज बनाना दैन स्पेथी फायरम एक्सेट्रा इज वेरियसली कलर्ड दे आर अगेन मैंट फॉर द अट्रैक्टिंग पॉइनेटर इंसेक्ट पॉइनेटर्स सो दीज आर सम करेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर्स ऑफ इंसेक्ट पॉइनेटेड फ्लावर्स Next, the flowers are often sweetly scented. This is again another characteristic feature of uh, insect pollinator flower. For example, we have Nectanthus, Centrum, Quisqualis, Ampelopris, and Jasmine. So these are the plants which uh, have which are sweetly scented. They have very good fragrance. Plants such as Arum, Amorphophallus, emit stinking smell to attract. carry on flies for pollination so they have some unique uh, they have unique fragrance to attract a particular insect that is carry on fly for the process of pollination the mostly they mostly contain nectar hidden in the nectaries lodged at the base of ovary corolla tube or in the spur to attract the insect pollinator some insect pollinated flowers create skin sticky substance which makes the pollen to stick to the body of pollinator for example we have anagallis then hyacinthus orchis and verbascum so ye jo plants hote hain they secrete some sticky pollen grains jo ki stick karte hain insect ki body ke surface ke upar this is the photograph of b jisme hum dekh sakte hain jo yellow colored pollen grains are they stick to the surface of insect's body so that they can be carried out to the another flower and gets trans and gets uh, shed on the stigmatic surface they produce moderate quality of pollen टू अवॉइड वेस्टेज एज कम्पेयर टू द एनिमोफिलस फ्लावर जिसमें कि प्लांट्स बहुत ज़्यादा अमाउंट में पोन ग्रेन्स प्रोड्यूस करते हैं सम फ्लावर सच एज वी हैव एनिमोन क्लेमेटस सेलिक्स थेलिक्ट्रम एक्सेट्रा प्रोड्यूस लार्ज क्वान्टिटी ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स बट देर सम प्लांट्स जो कि बहुत ज़्यादा अमाउंट में पोलन ग्रेन्स प्रोड्यूस करते हैं दिस पोलन इज यूज एज अ सोर्स ऑफ प्रोटीन बाय द पोनेटर्स तो पोलिनेटर इनको यूज करते हैं एज अ सोर्स ऑफ प्रोटीन द स्टेम एंड स्टिगमा आर फॉर्म एंड रिमेन इन साइड द फ्लावर टू brush against the insect the stigma of insect pollinated flower is mostly sticky to hold the pollen grains we have various groups of insect involved in pollination like we have bees and pollination with the help of bees is known as nalitophily then we have butterflies this is known as psychophily the term used for pollination with the help of butterflies is known as psychophily then moths pollination by moths is known as phalaenophily then beetles pollination by beetles is known as cantherophily pollination by ants is known as myrmecophily then pollination by wasp is known as vespophily and flies pollination with the help of flies is known as myophily and sapromyophily so these are the terms used for a particular insect pollination so pollination by butterflies then pollination by moth pollination by beetle that is known as cantherophily then pollination by ants that is known as myrmecophily then pollination by wasp that is known as vespophily then pollination by flies that is known as myophily and sapromyophily so these are the various terms that we use for a particular insect that helps in pollination according to austrian naturalist karl von frisch honey bees are blind to red light so this is a very important feature jo honey bees hoti hain they are blind to red light bees i cannot see a red color so they are color blind to red color they can distinguish between yellow blue green blue 
एंड अल्ट्रावाइट कलर ये डिस्टिंग्विश कर सकते हैं इन कलर्स में देन अल्ट्रावाइलेट लाइट एनेबल्स देम टू फॉलो नेक्टर गाइडेड पैटर्न सो जो हनी बीज हैं दे फॉलो द अल्ट्रावाइलेट लाइट टू रीच टू द फ्लावर सो सिंपल आईज होती हैं हनी बीज की द बीज आर ऑल्सो एबल टू डिफ्रेंशियट बिटवीन डिफरेंट शूगर्स एंड एरोमेटिक स्वीट और मिनटी ऑर्डर्स सो जो हनी बीज है दे कैन डिस्टिंग बिटवीन द डिफरेंट शूगर्स एंड डिफरेंट सेंट्स जो डिफरेंट ऑर्डर है स्मेल है उसको भी ये डिफ्रेंशिएट कर सकते हैं बीज सच एज हनी बीज बम्बल बीज स्टिंगलेस बीज एंड ऑर्किड बीज हैव पोलन बास्केट्स और दैर इज नोन एज कॉर्बिक्यूला ऑन द टीबिया ऑफ देयर हाइंड लेग्स सो इनमें एक स्पेशल स्ट्रक्चर प्रेजेंट होता है इन देयर हाइंड लेग विच इज नोन एज पोलन बास्केट्स और कॉर्बी कीड़ा जिसमें ये बहुत सारे पोलन ग्रेन्स को कैरी करते हैं सो दिस इज एन एक फीचर विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द बीज दैर इज नॉन एज कॉर्बी क्यूला विच इज प्रेजेंट ऑन द टीबिया और ऑन देयर हाइंड लाइक्स द बीज कलेक्ट पोलन इन दीज कैविटीज एंड कैरी टू देयर हाइब्स यहाँ पे ये पोलन ग्रेन्स को कैरी करते हैं एंड कैरी टू देयर हाइब्स जहाँ पे ये रहते हैं वहाँ पर ले जाते हैं अदर बीज पोल इज कॉपा दैर इज सिमिलर इन फंक्शन टू द पोलन बास्केट एक और स्ट्रक्चर प्रेजेंट होता है कुछ बीज में जिसे बोलते हैं स्कॉपा और इसका फंक्शन सेम है एज दैर ऑफ द कॉर्बिक्यूला फ्लावर्स एंड देयर पॉलिनेटर्स हैव इवॉल्व टुगेदर अंडर द नेचुरल सिलेक्शन एंड वी हैव्स मेनी एडेप्टेशन फॉर पॉलिनेशन बाय स्पेसिफिक पॉलिनेटर सो देर आर मेनी प्लांट्स विच प्रोड्यूस फ्लावर्स एंड देयर पॉलिनेटर्स दे हैव शोन साइमल्टेनियस इवोल्यूशन एंड दे हैव सर दे हैव डेल्प सर्टिन एडेप्टेशन टू इंश्योर द पॉलिनेशन इन द पर्टिकुलर प्लांट The specific combination of floral traits evolved in adaptation to specific pollinator is known as pollination syndrome. So, ये जो adaptation है plants की और pollinator की simultaneous adaptations, this is known as pollination syndrome. So, this structure is known as scopa that we have already discussed, जिसमें बहुत सारे pollen grains stick करते हैं. last slide i have discussed about the pollination syndrome this is an example of pollination syndrome that is pollination in salvia salvia is a member of family lamiaceae and it appears bilipped flower it shows one special mechanism that is known as liver mechanism or turn by floral mechanism for bee pollination here flowers are protandrous gamopetalous and bilabiate protandrous means here the male part that is stamens mature first as compared to the carpels and gamma petalus means here the petals are fused and bilabiate means having two lipped corolla so this is the feature of this genus the upper lip is modified in, into upper lip is modified into a hood like structure and the lower lip forms the landing surface for a insect pollinator then two epipetalous stamens are located in anterior lateral position that we can see here anterior lateral position so there are two stamens which are present are located in the anterior lateral position in the corolla tube each stamen has short filament short filament present hota hai and a elongated curved connective so this structure is a connective so this is the salvia flower and this is the insect uh, visitor or pollinator so one of the two anther lobe is fertile which is present towards the upper leaf which form the roof or hood like structure uh, which is located on the outer side of the connective inside the hood while the other one is sterile jo ek niche wala anther lobe hai wo sterile hota hai the two sterile lobes are located at the mouth of corolla they are present in the mouth of corolla tube and are partially block and partially blocks the path of visiting insect when the bee visit the young flower and moves its proboscis inside the corolla tube in search of nectar it had pushes the sterile plate formed by two sterile anther lobes to jaise insect move karta hai jo niche wala uh, anther hai uske lobe ko ye press karta hai with the proboscis and due to this pressing uh, phenomenon jo uh, fertile lobe hai anther ka that sticks or shedded the shed the pollen grains on the surface of insect So this brings down the fertile anther lobes and strike on the back of insect. Here, in this way, pollen are dusted on the back of bee. इस तरह से जो pollen grains हैं वो bee के surface के body के surface के ऊपर dust करते हैं. 
gay anthers when this bee visit the old flower with protruded bilipped stigma the stigma rubs against the pollen laden back of the bees and helps in pollination so in this way this pollination occurs in case of salvia which is known as liver mechanism or turnpike mechanism of pollination with the help of honey bees this is pollination in figs that is again an example of coevolution in case of fig the inflorescence is called hypanthodium and uh, a holosphere like fleshy receptacle which is also known as syconium of hypanthodium is found by the fusion of rachis of three closely placed sign so the basic inflorescence in case of uh, fig is hypanthodium and it have three types of flower one is the male flower which is present towards the pore which is known as osteole and the female flowers which are of two type one is the female flowers with long styles and female flower with short styles which are present on the base of this receptacle these flowers are also known as gall flowers the flowers female flowers with shorter style are also known as gall flowers so male flowers are present on the inner side of receptacle towards the narrow apical opening which is known as osteole while there are two types of female flowers long style and short styles short style flower is also known as gall flower occurring in the figs are present towards the base and most of the fig are pollinated by a fig wasp which belongs to super family chelsea and this uh, this insect or wasp is known as blastophaga the fig wasp partnership requires a fine tuning and synchronicity between the partner in common fig that is ficus carica two varieties known as capri fig which is a wild variety and a uh, smyrna fig which is a edible uh, variety of fig uh, occurs and they are pointed by fig wasp that is blastophaga glamour so this is the name of this insect that is blastophaga glamour uh, that helps in pollination in the, both the varieties of fig so the wasp spend their larval stage inside the fig they mature mate and the female wasp escape the fig through the holes dug by the male wasp so iske andar hi uh, jo larva uh, female le karti hai yahan pe ye uh, uh, produce karte hain offspring aur yahan pe ye mate karte hain isi uh, hypanthodium ke andar and after that jo male uh, wasp hain wo ek hole create karte hain yahan pe they dig a hole uh, and then the female wasp will comes out of this hole and this uh, chemical signal there are some chemical signal which are released by a fig when it becomes receptive for pollination helps in attracting the female wasp jo female wasp hai they can sense the aroma or one specific chemical signal which is created by the fig and they helps in the process of pollination these enter the fig through the narrow opening which is known as osteole and lose their wings and एंटीने इन डूइंग सो जैसे ये वॉस्प इसके अंदर एंटर करता है तो दिस ओपनिंग इज अ वेरी नैरो ओपनिंग और जब ये एंटर करता है इसमें सो दिस इंसेक्ट लूज देयर विंग्स एज वेल एज एंटीनास द फीमेल वॉस पॉइनेट द स्टिगमास ऑफ द फ्लोरिट्स विद लॉन्ग स्टाइल्स एंड ले एग्स इन द ओव्यूल्स ऑफ द फ्लोरिट विद शॉर्ट स्टाइल्स बाई इंसर्टिंग हर लॉन्ग ओवी पोजिटर डाउन टू द इन साइड द ओवरी सो जो ये फीमेल वास्प है वो पॉइनेट करता है फीमेल फ्लावर्स विद लॉन्ग स्टाइल्स एंड लेट्स एग इन टू द फ्लावर्स ऑफ फीमेल विच आर ऑफ शॉर्ट स्टाइल उसके बेस में ओवरी के पास ही अपने एग ले करता है द वॉस लार्वे फीड ऑन द एंडोस्पम टिश्यू ऑफ द गोल्फ फ्लावर्स एंड द लार्वल डेवलपमेंट कोरलेट्स विद द होस्ट फिग डेवलपमेंट वैन द वॉस मच्योर दे च्यू देयर वे आउट फ्राम द गोल्स एंड कम टू लाई इन टू द फिग कैविटी तो ये जो गोल्फ फ्लावर्स है उससे बाहर आते हैं जैसे लार्वा मच्योर होता है एंड कम्स टू दिस फिग कैविटी दिस विंगलेस मेल च्यू द होल इन द इन होल टू द आउटसाइड थ्रू द फिग वॉल बिफोर मेटिंग एंड डाइंग तो यहाँ पे ये एक होल क्रिएट करते हैं बिफोर मेटिंग एंड डाइंग जिससे कि जो फीमेल वास पे वो यहाँ से बाहर आ सके द विंग द विंग्ड फीमेल्स लोडेड विद पोलन एस्केप टू द आउटसाइड एंड अगेन पॉइंट द 
new fig. So this way, the pollination in case of fig occur, which is the best example of coevolution. So the both pollinator as well as the plant have developed certain adaptation with the evolution process. The next example of pollination maturism is yucca plant. This yucca plant species are xerophilic plants and have white and fragrant flowers but without any nectar and they open during night and attract limited number of insect pollinators so uh, they have developed certain mechanism for pollination firstly the pollination between yucca moth that is tegeticula and parategeticula these are the yucca moth species and yucca plant is an excellent example of pollination mutualism or we can say coevolution and the pollination mutualism was first described by Charles V. Rillet in 1872. This phenomenon was first studied by Charles V. Rillet in 1872. In this type, the female adult pollinates the flowers of her host plant, whereas her larval progenies consume some seeds in developing foods, and remaining seeds are enough to ensure the process of reproduction in yucca plant. So to mature female hoti adult female who apne eggs lay karti hai in the ovary of this yucca flower and these larval stages consuming consumes the developing seeds of this yucca plant and the remaining seeds are enough to ensure the process of reproduction in this plant. Here yucca species are xerophilic plant that I have already discussed and have white fragrant flowers without any nectar and they are night blooming flowers and they attract limited number of insect pollinators then female yucca moth visit anthers of yucca flower and scrap the pollens from them and it carries the lumps of pollens and keeps them under their chin in maxillary palps or ye jo pollen grains ko scrap karti hai from the anther of yucca they carry them in the palps of their uh, max maxillary palps in ke to maxillary palps so unbe ye pollen grains ko carry karta hai for, from one plant to next plant then she leaves in search of another flower at a right stage of development to lay fertilized eggs in the ovary. When this moth visits another flower in search of uh, uh, the particular host plant for to lay her eggs, afterwards the female moth goes to the stigma of the flower and deposits some pollen grains on the stigma to affect the process of pollination. Then fully grown. Then in uh, after that, these larvae consume some developing seeds that I have already discussed, and uh, whereas the remaining seeds are enough to ensure the process of reproduction in uh, yucca plant, then fully grown larvae drops to the ground, bury themselves in the soil or uh, leaves, make cocoons, and stay underground until the next spring. So next spring tak ye khud ko uh, covering covering mein rakhte hain cocoon mein so this is how this yucca plant is pointed by this yucca moth that is tegeticula and parategeticula which is an example of pollination mutualism or pollination syndrome next example of pollination mutualism is in pollination in aristolochia this plant shows uh, this plant flower should develop a mechanism which is known as fly trap mechanism for pollination so the flowers in this aristology are protogynous it means the female uh, reproductive organ matures earlier as compared to the male organ reproductive, reproductive organ here the protogynous flowers are duck shaped that we can see in this photograph so flowers in ki shape hoti are duck shape with long parian tube having a dilated base containing sex organs so it bears a reproductive organ at this base which is dilated base swollen base hota jahan pe reproductive organs present hote and in this uh, parent tube it bears hairs which are slippery in nature then parent tube is lined with deflexed hair making it slippery that we can see here we can the hairs present hote hain curved hair which are slippery in nature then pointing small flies are attracted towards the flower by the flare and foetid smell like decaying tobacco or humus emitted by them uh, attracts the pointing flies towards itself towards the flower 
एंड फ्लाइज कैन एंटर थ्रू द पेरियंस ट्यूब बट कैन नॉट एस्केप इमीडिएटली जो फ्लाइज हैं वो एंटर तो करती हैं बट यहाँ से एस्केप नहीं हो पाते बिकॉज डाउनवर्ड कर्वेचर ऑफ दिस हेयर्स सो इफ दीज फ्लाइज वर कैरिड वर कैरिंग पोलन्स द सेम विल बी डिपोजिटेड ऑन द स्टिगमा टू अफेक्ट पॉइनेशन तो जैसे ही अगर ये फ्लाइज ने विजिट किया कोई और फ्लार तो इनके बैक पे पोलन ग्रेन्स प्रेजेंट होते हैं देन दे विल एंटर इन साइड दिस पेरियंथ ट्यूब एंड विल कम इन एंड विल कम इन कंटैक्ट विद द स्टिगमेटिक सर्फेस एंड डिपोजिट द पोलन ग्रेन्स ऑन द सर्फेस ऑफ स्टिगमा टू इंश्योर द प्रोसेस ऑफ पॉइनेशन दैन फ्लाइज रिमेन इन साइड द स्पोलन बेस जो फ्लाइज हैं वो स्पोलन बेस के अंदर ही रहती है लगभग आठ से दस दिन तक और अप्रॉक्सीमेटली एट टू टेन डेज द एंथर्स ऑल्सो मेच्योर बिकॉज द फ्लार इज प्रोटोगाइनस इट मीन्स द फीमेल पोर्शन इज वेरी मच एक्टिव और रिसेप्टिव फॉर द पोलन ग्रेन्स विच आर कैरिड बाय द इंसेक्ट्स बट आफ्टर एट और टेन डेज द मेल पोर्शन दैट इज द एंथर बिकम्स मेच्योर एंड डिहाइस बाय दिस टाइम एंड पोलन गेट्स डिपोजिटेड ऑन द बॉडीज ऑफ फ्लाइज और ये जो पोलन ग्रेन्स है डिपॉजिट होते हैं फ्लाइज की बैक पे एंड कॉन्फ्रेंटली जो पेरियंथ ट्यूब में हेयर्स होते हैं दे द पेरियंथ ट्यूब फर्स्टली बैंड्स बैकवर्ड एंड हेयर बिकम्स फ्लैसिड एंड विदर्स जो हेयर्स होते हैं वो फ्लैसिड हो जाते हैं दे विदर मीन्स दे ब्रेक डाउन एंड आफ्टर दैट द इंसेक्ट और द फ्लाई कैन मूव आउट ऑफ दिस ट्यूब सो दिस फैसिलिटेट द एस्केप ऑफ फ्लाइज लेड एन विद पोलन ग्रेन्स टू पॉइंट द न्यू फ्लार सो दिस इज अगेन एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पॉइनेशियन मिचुअलिज्म विच अकर्स इन केस ऑफ अरिस्टोलोजिया प्लांट नेक्स्ट इम्स पॉइनेशन इन ऑर्किड्स इस अगेन एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ पॉइनेशियन मिचुअलिज्म और पॉइनेशन सिंड्रोम हेयर सम बेज हर्ब्स एंड पॉइनेशन ऑर्किड्स हैव डिवेल्प डिवेल्प वेराइटी ऑफ इंट्रिकेट स्ट्रेटजीज फॉर अट्रैक्टिंग स्पेसिफिक पॉइनेटर्स Uh, for example they employ an actor in addition to this they have, they are brightly colored the flowers of orchids are brightly colored they have very good fragrance to attract the insect pollinator in addition to this they also show sexual deception behavior means the flowers uh, resembles the female partner of many bees and wasps so many orchids lure their pollinators means attract their pollinators through sexual deception by mimicking the appearance and scents produced by the females of the pollinators jo insects hain like we have bees and wasps to unke jo female partners hote hain unki tarah inki shape hoti hai flowers ki and they secrete the similar fragrance as that of their uh, female partners so uh, the chemical substances known as pheromones so it resembles the pheromones of the female partner of these bees and wasps the flowers of uh, one orchid that is oncidium oncidimus हैन कैन आई द स्पीशीज इज हैन कैन आई सो ऑन सी डी एम एस हैन का आई रिजेंबल्स द फीमेल बीज एंड आर पॉइनेटेड बाई मेल्स बी ट्राइंग टू मेट विद द फ्लार बिकॉज दिस फ्लार रिजेंबल्स द फीमेल पार्टनर ऑफ दिस बी दैर इज ऑन सी डी एम एस हैन कैन आई इन केस ऑफ ऑफरिस पैकेलम दैर इज अगेन एन ऑर्किड ऑफरिस पैकेलम द लेबलम of the flower looks like the body of fetching female wasp yahan pe jo iski body hoti hai flower ki that that is the labellum it resembles the female wasp and the male hairy wasp that is colpa aurea so colpa aurea is a male wasp it matures about 4 weeks prior to the maturation of females the flowers in this species that possess a similar appearance and exude a scent which is similar to the pheromone produced by the receptive female also mature at the same time to ye jo flower hai ye mature hota hai along with that male wasp to ye secrete karta hai same pheromone which is secreted by, by the female uh, wasp so it is uh, jo male wasp they are they are attracted towards this flower so the male pollinator wrongly consider flower of his female counterpart grabs the labellum grabs the labellum and attempts to copulate with it while doing this in this process pollinia pollinia which are the uh, composite pollen grains which form a single unit that is pollinia they gets deposit on the insect head wo insect ke head ke upar deposit ho jate hain they are carried to the next flower for pollination the next we have on cdm they have flowers that resembles the male of certain bee wasp to jo on cdm hai iske jo फ्लावर्स हैं वो मेल की तरह भी रिजेंबल करते हैं 
सो फॉर दैट डिसेप्शन दीज फ्लावर्स आर अटैक्ड बाई मेल्स सो जो मेल्स हैं वो इस फ्लावर को अटैक करते हैं एज दे कंसिडर दीज फ्लावर्स एज देयर कंपिटिटर्स एंड दे गेट रॉन्गली मैस्ट विद दीज फ्लावर्स एंड पोलिनिया गेट्स डिपॉजिट ऑन देयर हैड्स एंड दे आर कैरी टू दर फ्लावर्स इन दिस वे पोलिनेशन अकर्स इन ऑर्किड्स एंड दिस एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अगेन पोलिनेशन मिचर इज नेक्स्ट कम्स नेक्स्ट टाइप ऑफ जूफिली इज मैलेकोफिली दैट इज पोलिनेशन बाय स्नेल्स सो इट इज अ पोलिनेशन मैकेजम एक्म्पलिश विद द हेल्प ऑफ स्लग्स एंड स्नेल्स एग्जाम्पल्स आर एरेसिमा एरम केला पेलिस्ट्रिस लेमा लेमना माइनर दैन वी हैव फिलोडेंड्रॉन पिनेंटी फिडम सो दीज आर सम एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ प्लांट्स वे आर द फ्लावर्स आर पॉइनेटेड बाय स्नेल्स एंड स्लग्स Next comes ornithophily. It's again an example of zoophily. Here, the pollination is done by birds. So birds helps in pollination. So these flowers are brightly colored, large in size. So pollination is by the agency of birds. Many species of small nectarivore birds, such as hummingbird, sunbird, honey getters, honey creepers, white eyes, and the South African sugar birds. are pollinators of many plant species here plants have their pollinating birds have co-evolved again the plants and the birds are evolved simultaneously and exhibit a classic example of plant animal mutualism that i have already discussed in case of insect plant mutualism uh, where the plants uh, are pollinated by a particular insect and they have developed certain adaptations with the passage of time The pollinating birds are generally small in size, with brushy tongues and long beaks, so that they can get the nectar from the plant, uh, flowers. They are capable of hovering flights, or are light enough to perch on the flower structures without damaging them. So, the birds that we can see here, so they can remain uh, static in the air, and can get the nectar from the flower. In addition to this, they are very light in weight, and they uh, can get the nectar from flower without damaging their parts. a bird feed on the energy rich nectar or even pollens of some in some cases pollen is deposited on the bird's head and neck and then transferred to the other flower where it visit the another flower so jo birds hote hain they are light in weight jab ye nectar uh, suck karte hain at that time some pollen gets deposit on their head when they will visit the another flower they will deposit their pollen grains these pollen grains on that flower and ensure the process of pollination plants have also developed certain mechanisms to ensure the bird pollination next comes adaptation for the bird pollination it means plants have developed certain strategies to ensure the pollination by birds it's very costly process for the plants so firstly the flowers are brightly colored to attract the birds from a distant place they are generally odorless it means they have no scent or fragrance ये फ्लावर्स होते हैं कोई फ्रेगरेंस नहीं होती है फ्लावर्स आर जनरली लार्ज साइज ट्यूबुलर और फनल शेप्ड एंड लेदर इन टेक्सचर दे प्रोड्यूस प्लेंटी ऑफ नेक्टर मीन्स दे प्रोड्यूस कॉपीज नेक्टर कंटेनिंग शुगर्स एंड एज अ रिवॉर्ड फॉर द पॉइनेटर्स सो एज अ रिवॉर्ड पॉइनेटर्स के लिए बहुत ज़्यादा अमाउंट में नेक्टर्स प्रोड्यूस करते हैं ये फ्लावर्स फ्लावर्स आर ऑरिएंटेड इन सच अ वे जो फ्लावर्स की ऑरिएंटेशन होती है दैट इज इन सच अ वे सो दैट बर्ड्स कैन ईजली गेट द नेक्टर so that the birds to stay near the flower without getting entangled in the uh, nearby flowers and branches so wo jo flowers ki orientation hoti hai wo is tarah se hoti hai taki birds easily us nectar ko suck kar sake bird pollination has evolved in high altitude ecosystem kyunki jo high altitude ecosystem hota hai wahan pe jo insects hote hain insect pollinators are not that much enough so that's why they consider this uh, ornithophily as an uh, adaptation otherwise this ornithophily is considered to be a costly strategy for the plants some species of banksia open their flowers only in response to bird actions to reduce the wastage of pollen so when they know that there is a bird pollinator only when only then the flowers will open in response to the bird's action so there are plants like banksia which open only their flowers when uh, the bird in response to the bird's action to reduce or to stop the wastage of pollen grains so these are some adaptation shown by plants which are pollinated by birds 
Next comes chiropterophily. So this is the pollination by flying mammals like we have winged mammals like bats. So this is the pollination by winged mammals such as bats and flying foxes. It occurs in tropics, means tropical regions plants are pollinated by uh, bats. These flowers are characterized by having ball shaped flowers borne on long stalks either singly or in clusters away from foliage and branches so that we can see in this photograph. As these pollinators are nocturnal animals means they are active during the night. Flowers mostly open during night and have dull colored flowers which emit strong musty odor and produces large amount of nectar. So these flowers hote hain, they are not that much brightly colored flower because they are night blowing flowers or ye produce karte hain strong odor or smell. In addition to this, they produce plenty of nectar. Such pollinators have long tongues. Jo ye pollinators hain, bats hain, they have long tongues and slender muscle and lap nectar after landing on the flowers. While lapping, they get dusted with the pollen grains that is carried to the distant flowers for pollination. So while taking nectar, the pollen grains hain, wo inke head ke upar or neck ke upar deposit ho jate hain, and they carry them to the another flowers where they get pollinated, they get dusted on the stigmatic surface. So bat pollinates approximately 300 species of the fruit trees such as mangoes, guavas and bananas. Many members of the family Fabaceae Cactus, Malvesi, Bignonia C are pollinated by bats. We have some examples of plants like we have Kaigella pineta, which is common on a sausage tree, and Adansonia digitata, that is a baobab tree, and Areca palm. So these plants are pollinated by these plants, pollen grains are pollinated by bats. Next comes Therophily. So this is uh, the pollination with the help of squills. So mechanism of pollination by a non-winged mammal, especially rodents such as squills, Australian honey possum, etc. So that is known as therophily. Palm squills are reported to pollinate the cultivary coconut patches. Some marsupials such as honey possum and sugar glider pollinate many plants of Australian proteaceae family. Australian honey possum use nectar and pollen as mainstay of its diet. So, jo ye animal hai, honey possum, its diet hai, that is only nectar and pollen grains of these trees. Next comes artificial pollination, as the name indicates, artificial pollination. So, when we artificially pollen grains ko dust karte on the stigmatic surface of a flower, is known as artificial pollination. So, process of applying pollens on the stigmatic surface of flower is known as artificial pollination it can be achieved with the help of brush to apply the pollen manually on the receptive stigma mechanical pollination also known as pollen dusting has also become very popular it is the process of spreading pollens through large blowers drones or from small aircrafts onto the large fields of crops to ensure the process of pollination artificial pollination is used in plant breeding experiment and also to ensure high percentage of seed setting in crop plants. So this, these are the advantages of artificial pollination. Next comes the advantages of cross pollination. So uh, cross pollination have various advantages over cell pollination. Cross pollination adds genetic diversity, which is very important in the genetic pool of a species through recombination. It produces hybrid plants. That is again an important characteristic of cross pollination to keep the species strong and disease resistant then it brings variation and these variations uh, can lead to the development of new races varieties even new species it increases the adaptability of plants to the changing environmental condition it means it makes the plant very much resistant to the changing environmental conditions cross pollination introduces hybrid vigor in the offspring and lead to the higher yields and better characteristic of the crop plants so jo hybrid plants hote hain, they have greater yield as compared to the parental plants the defective genes or characters gets eliminated or replaced by better genes or character with the help of cross pollination. So these are some advantages of cross pollination over self pollination. Next comes disadvantages of cross pollination. Firstly, there is no purity of genetic pool. So the purity of genetic pool is lost. Then there is uh, it is less economical process. Plants need to produce large number of pollen grains to ensure the effective pollination. 
it is uh, we can say this is uh, somewhat a wasteful process many un undesirable genes or characters are also introduced in a species by cross pollination mixing of character can take place in the crop plants and the desirable character can maybe be lost so there are chances of uh, loss of some desirable characters in the plants plants it is a wasteful process as some accessory structures need to be developed by the plants to attract the suitable pollinator a chance factor is always involved in cross pollination it is not there is no surety of pollination because it depends upon the availability of pollinators suitable pollinators may not be available in particular area for the number for their numbers may be less to affect the process of pollination in entire crop so there is less yield and due to lack of pollinators so these are some disadvantages of cross pollination so this is a slide which shows uh, a summarized form of advantages of cross pollination which is uh, which are progeny shows enhanced vigor of springs are more viable then there is a possibility uh, to get new desirable characters the yield of crop can be maintained it helps in evolution undesirable characters of plants can be eliminated then comes disadvantages of cross pollination uh, that pollination may be failed due to distant barriers then flowers are totally dependent on the external agencies for pollination it is more uh, wastage of there is more wastage of pollen grains it may introduce some undesirable characters in the plants so these are some uh, disadvantages of cross pollination this was all about for our today's discussion about the various agencies which are required for cross pollination if you have any questions queries and any suggestions you can give it in the comment section thanks for watching have a great day